Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a review and a demo of a foundation. The foundation we're reviewing today is the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Foundation. And I chose to do this because it's expensive and if I was going, if I was not reviewing it for you, I would want to watch a review on it so I know whether it's worth it or not. So that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> So let's start with the basics of this foundation. It's called the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Long Wear Flawless Fluid Makeup SPF 50, or mine says SPF 10, but the Nordstrom website says SPF 15. So maybe there, I don't know. I don't think there are different ones, but that's kind of weird. It is $57 and you can get it at wherever they sell Chanel, mostly department stores or I guess a Chanel store. I don't know if Chanel stores sell, sell their makeup. I don't know. <laughs> This foundation comes in 19 different shades, which I think is a pretty big range of shades. It's more than you get for most foundations. They also have different skin tones in this foundation. They, they have like one that's just like beige, and then one that's like beige amber, and one that's beige ro rosé. So I'm assuming the amber one is more yellow tone, and the rose one is more pink tone, which is good because we all have different undertones. I have the shade 30 beige. So I just have like the neutral undertone one, which I usually get. Like in True Match, I'm N3, and I usually get NC at MAC, but I probably could go for their neutral range also. But I usually go for a neutral range, so that's why I have that. But if you are more pink, to more pink tone or more yellow tone, then they do have options for you. So... Now I'm going to read off of the Nordstrom website of what this foundation claims to do. It says, effortless to apply with seamless blendability for a naturally flawless effect, this breakthrough foundation is the ideal all-day, everyday formula suitable for all skin types in a diverse range of 20 shades. It says 20. I counted 19. Maybe I'm bad at math. <laughs> it says, oil-free, dermatologist-tested, non-comedogenic. Now that we have all of the basics out of the way, I'm going to cut to my demo so you guys can watch how I put this foundation on. I put it on with the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush, but I have used the Beauty Blender with it as well. Just in this demo, I used this. So we're going to cut to that, and then I'll come back and give you my opinions on it. So let's go through the claims they made and see if I think they held true. Firstly, it says effortless to apply with seamless blendability. I do agree that it's very blendable. It's way more liquidy than any other long wearing foundation. Like it's definitely, it's really liquidy actually. So it's very easy to blend, but it does set. So you're gonna not work fast with it, but it does set on the skin. So don't like put it all over your face and then like work on this side and then go to this. I would just like do section by section, which is what I usually do with all of my foundations. In terms of it being a long wear foundation, I have found that it does wear very well with or without primer. I've tried it out with uh, with several different primers and I do find that it wears throughout the day. It doesn't really get, mm, I wouldn't say that it doesn't get splotchy, but by the end of the day, your face is still mostly intact. In terms of the way it looks on your skin, that's where we kind of get into my into the downfalls that I have with this foundation because it's a very matte finish. So 
it can cling to dry patches and make your face look powdery even though, like right now I don't have any powder on but if you look up close if you look up close though it does look like I have a kind of a lot of powder on so that's that's kind of where I don't really enjoy this foundation is because it looks so powdery and I I enjoy not a dewy fat not a dewy finish but I enjoy more of a satin finish not completely matte where you look powdery but not greasy looking either I like somewhere in between and this is definitely on it makes your skin look dry and I did have some acne scarring like a couple times when I wore it or not acne scarring like actual breakouts when I wore it and like throughout the day those breakouts would be like flaky so mm, that is where I kind of don't like this foundation so I would say that it's not for dry skin but if you have really oily skin and you want to take down those oils like all together definitely give this a try in terms of coverage I would I thought this would have a lot more coverage than it actually does I today I didn't put any other concealer on just because for the sake of this review but I'm looking at myself and I really really want to put concealer on because it just kind of it almost like highlights your blemishes like it covers everything else pretty well but then like the actual breakouts kind of like peek through even more I don't understand it but I really want to put on concealer but like er, I'm not because of this review but every other time I've worn this foundation I've put concealer over so I think it's a I don't want to say light it's definitely it's like a on the on the money medium coverage but I prefer more of a on like a high medium or like a full coverage I'm more, yeah I like more full coverage just because I do have breakouts I do have like discoloration I just like like my face to be a bare canvas like I want to mask everything <laughs> so that I can like make my face what I want it to look like but do I think it's worth the $57 I'm gonna have to say no because for $57 I personally I want a foundation to do everything that I want it to I want it to cover what I want to cover and if it's not covering I want it to make my skin look prettier for instance the hourglass veil fluid foundation that isn't the fullest coverage but it makes your skin look so blendable that you don't mind putting the extra concealer on whereas this it doesn't cover what I want it to cover and it also doesn't make my skin look prettier to where uh, it's worth putting on the concealer and I think that is because I because it's such a matte finish that it kind of dulls your skin rather than make it look radiant or make it look more glowing or obviously it's not gonna make it look glowing it's a matte finish but I usually in terms of matte finish foundations I want matte finish foundations to cover what I need to cover that's what I like I like the Revlon color stay I like the Rimmel stay matte because those cover what I want them to cover all in all do I like this foundation I like it I don't love it I don't think it's anything revolutionary and for it being Chanel like everybody raves about like the Chanel Vital Lumine Vital Lumiere Aqua and all the other Chanel foundations so I'm just like Meh. I expect a lot more from it so I like it but it's not my favorite and I in the future like I wouldn't repurchase it I wouldn't have if I n had known better I wouldn't have spent my money on it but I'm not gonna return it because I kind of like it <laughs> and it's too late to return it I've had it for way too long okay guys that's it for my foundation review of the Chanel Perfection Lumiere foundation I hope this helped I hope it gave you a little more of an insight as to whether you should buy this foundation or not because it is really pricey and you if you're purchasing something this pricey you should definitely do a little more background research because it's not something that you can be like oh well that didn't work I guess it'll just sit in my drawer because it is pretty pricey so I hope you enjoyed give this video a thumbs up if you did I also have a makeup tutorial on this look I'm wearing right now so if you're interested in what I'm wearing I'll link that video down below and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later bye guys